Justice Ketanji Brown Jackson from the US Supreme Court seems to not understand the Constitution she is meant to protect. Uh, she expressed concerns that the First Amendment was hamstringing the federal government too severely. What do you make of today's shock revelations about uh, the Supreme Court justice uh, appointed by Joe Biden? So I'll begin before I answer that, I'll go on an oblique tangent for a second. Until about 15 minutes ago, the 117 billion people who have been estimated to have existed on Earth absolutely knew the definition of male or female. But yet when she was being confirmed, <laughs> if you remember, she said that, you know, she's not a biologist, yes. so she couldn't, right? So if we have a Supreme Court justice <laughs> who's incapable of telling us what a woman is, then I'm not surprised that she's having some difficulties understanding the intricacies of the First Amendment mechanisms. But to answer your question more directly, th this is actually something that I speak about in The Parasitic Mind, the difference between deontological and consequentialist ethics. Deontological ethics are absolute statements of truth. So freedom of speech should be a deontological principle. You never say, I believe in freedom of speech, but... On the other hand, if your spouse asks you, mm -hmm. do I look fat in those jeans, then you could put on your consequentialist hat because then you might say, I'm going to lie to spare my spouse's feelings. But when it comes to foundational principles that are enshrined in the First Amendment, it has to be a deontological principle. And apparently our, ju uh, our justice, uh, uh, U.S. Supreme Court justice is unaware of that distinction. So it was grotesque, uh, but it didn't surprise me. Uh, it is disturbing. It is disturbing to have someone in her position make a comment like that. And it wasn't just one comment. The, 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 I've listened to the whole uh, questioning she had around that First Amendment and, wow, astonishing. Now, I want to ask you about musician Neil Young. Uh, he has announced he's going to come back to Spotify after he quit the site because of Joe Rogan and supposed disinformation. Uh, he got all sorts of excuses for the backflip here. But in the end, it seems when it comes to these celebrity opinions, they love to grandstand, but they also love money and they love that Spotify money perhaps more than their principles. You're right. And I mean, one of the things that I love to go back to Elon, and, and I think one of the reasons my voice resonates is because I think that we, we really are driven by a set of principles and we don't deviate from them. But when you look at all of these imbeciles in Hollywood and all these actors and singers, they, they go with how the wind blows, right? And so when everybody was saying, if Donald Trump were to win in 2016, I'm moving to Canada, I live in Canada. I'm still waiting for Cher to move to Canada. She hasn't apparently moved to Canada yet. And so they, from this side of their mouth, they grandstand. And from this side of their mouth, they violate all of their, quote, principles. They're grotesque. They're idiots. They don't have a moral compass. Before you go, I have to get your opinion on how things are going in Canada. Your great and fearless leader, Justin Trudeau. Uh, what's the political environment like in Canada? And, and is that Trudeau in peril? Will he survive the next election? Well, certainly the polls are showing that he is in peril. And so if, if, if the elections were to happen tomorrow, I think that he'd be, you know, it would be, oh, dare I say a bloodbath? Am I allowed to say a bloodbath or am I calling for a oh, genocide? If I use the it, it, maybe I shouldn't say that. Yeah, well, it, it, it would be, it would be a massacre. Can I say that? Or that's also incitement to violence. But anyways, uh, look, it Canada, don't say a landslide I, either because that's frightening. It won't be a landslide yeah. either. Yes. Right. No, I think he would definitely lose. And uh, you know, I received a, a text a few days ago from Elon, a private one, where he said, "Hey, I wonder how is it that you could survive in Canada." with such rampant woke mind viruses. And so to your question, it's very difficult for me not only to be in Canada, but to be within the university ecosystem in Quebec, because my own university, mm. there are many things that I love about it. It's very, very woke. And so it is definitely difficult to walk on my shoes on a daily basis, but I do it hopefully with a smile. Well, we rely on you, Dr. Sad and uh, Jordan Peterson to... Uh to fight the good fight in Canada. I know there is others, but you two are leading the way. Thank you so much for your time this evening. Really do appreciate it.